So I want you to put in the comments about this thing over in Scotland right now of these people coming out, inquiry and stuff like this about these, you know, Catholic abuse. And it just, this stuff always vexes my soul so badly. It's just, it's so disgusting to me, but it needs to be talked about. It needs to be brought out and people need to understand this, that this is the reality of what goes on in a lot of the Catholic system. Okay. And it just gets covered up and covered up and covered up and covered up. It's the Catholic Church is a satanic church. Absolutely, completely satanic. It's just disgusting. This is the BBC here. It says, Inquiry told girl abused by priest at Smilium, Smilum Park had arm broken by nun. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> An eight-year-old girl had her arm broken by a nun after... Let me zoom in a little bit here. After she discovered the child was being sexually abused by a priest, an inquiry has heard. Teresa Tolmy McGrain told the Scottish Child Abuse Inquiry she hoped the nun would protect her after walking in on the assault at Smilium Park Orphanage in 1970, but she said she was instead verbally abused and thrown at a wall. She said she was then beaten and threatened with having her other arm broken. Beatings and humiliation, Miss Tolmy McGrain waived her right to an anonymity at the inquiry uh, to recount a catalogue of other abuses during her 11 years at the orphanage in Lanark, South Lanarkshire, which closed in the 1980s. These included beatings, humiliations, freezing showers, and children being force-fed and edible food, being told to eat their vomit, and having their mouths rinsed out with soap. The witness told the hearing in Edinburgh how she arrived at the institution run by the Daughters of Charity, of St. Vincent de Paul at the age of six in 1968 after an abusive early childhood. She recounted how, about two years later, she had a job dusting pews in the church. One particular priest would arrive early and ask her to sit on his lap before progressing to, make, to making her to perform a sex act on him or watch as he did so, the inquiry heard. He said, I need you to be a soldier of God, a good little soldier, she told the inquiry, adding the abuse went on for several months. On one occasion, a nun walked into the room as it was happening. She said, she told the hearing, I thought, praise the Lord, she's seeing this. She's going to be angry with him and protect me. Her whole face became distorted. I thought she's angry with him, but she was angry with me. It's okay to lie. She told how she crawled away and had to go back to church, but when another nun found out she could not raise her arm, she was given a real hiding, or she was beaten really bad. I said, I couldn't lift my arm. My arm hurt. I said, a nun has broken my arm, Ms. Tommy McGrain, Tommy McGrain said. Oh, there she is today. She told the inquiry how the second nun took her to the hospital, but warned her, don't you dare tell anybody what happened, young lady, or I'll break your other arm. Now, look at this. This is important. And assured her that she would be her, assured her she would be lying to protect a man of God, so it's okay to lie. Isn't it interesting that that's exactly what goes on in a lot of these Baptist churches? Don't you speak against the man of God? Are they really Baptists or are they Roman Catholics in disguise? I've seen it. I've seen it. I've been in those Baptist churches. I've seen the pride. I've seen all that stuff. How they change when they're not behind the pulpit. Not in their church. They act differently. And there's plenty of sexual abuse that goes on. Ms. Tolmy McGrain, who later went to Glasgow University and now works in Norway as a psychologist, told the inquiry she was at Smilium, probably pronouncing that wrong, from 1968 until 1979. She described how on her first night there she was slapped after waking up screaming from a nightmare, then forced into a freezing cold shower for wetting the bed. If a child vomited, they would have their faces rubbed in it or be told to eat it, she said. I was abused by nuns for a decade at Smilium Park. The witness also described beatings at the hands of nuns, sometimes with the crosses they wore. I would say every child at some point would have been hit with a cross, she said. Children would be made to sleep in soiled sheets for two or three nights as a punishment for bedwetting, she said. She also told the hearing that when they went on an annual holiday to Ayrshire, um, they would end up badly beaten, badly burnt and blistered from the sun. The inquiry also heard how one girl would run away often but never return after being run over by a car one day. 
Miss Tolmy McGrain told the inquiry she approached police officers visit visiting Smilliam on two occasions to tell them the nuns are hurting me, but was marched back in to the institu institution on both occasions and then beaten by a nun. Injuries from her time at Smilliam include, included a facial scar and broken tooth from being slammed into a wall, broken fingers from being hit with a hairbrush, and a broken tailbone from having a seat pulled out from underneath her when she was sitting down. I have unfortunately physical scars, not just emotional ones, she told the hearing. The public hearing in front of Lady Smith continues. Absolutely disgusting. You say, well, wait a second, though. Why this stuff happened way back then? Why did it? Why did they wait You know, for so many years? Well, you saw she was trying to tell the police about it. She was trying to tell other people about it. And it was all just being covered up. That's what the Catholic Church does. Now, how can you tell me that the Catholic Church is Christ's church. Oh, there's just a little bit of isolated abuse. This thing is an epidemic. It goes on all the time. All the time. It's just disgusting. But uh, we'll read the, the next one here. Another one. Orphanage boy beaten after seeing nuns embracing. Uh, this just came out too here just a day or so ago. A young boy was beaten black and blue after seeing two nuns in an embrace an inquiry has heard. A man said he was six or seven when one of the nuns lashed out at him in a boiler room at Smilliam Park Orphanage in the 1960s. So they were, you know, sodomites, lesbians back then, the nuns. He told the Scottish Child Abuse Inquiry the vicious assault led, left him with blood coming out of his ear and nose. He described beatings with, from the nuns as thunderous. The witness, who cannot be identified, told the inquiry of his experiences at the Lanark home, which closed in the 1980s. He said he moved to the orphanage run by the Daughters of Charity of St. Vincent in DePaul in the mid-1960s, where he was never given any love, affection, or praise from the nuns and staff who ran it. Physical, physical abuse in the form of slaps and kicks were routine for trivial stuff, he told the, the hearing uh, in Edinburgh. The man recounted one incident in which he walked past a boiler room and went through an open door to have a look inside. Black and blue like a boxing match. He said... There were two nuns in there, and one nun had her arms around the other one, at which point she turned around and gave me a right good hiding. Beat him up, in other words. I'm talking about punching, kicking, pulling my hair. I distinctly remember there was a boiler, and it had a flame coming out of it, a flame thrower. She put my face really close to that. I can still remember my hair getting singed, my eyelashes, and the smell of singed, singeing stayed, stayed with us for a quite a while after that. When he woke up from the attack, he said he had blood coming from my ear and uh, blood coming from my nose. Four days, uh, for days after that, I was black and blue like being in a boxing match, actually. He said he wondered for a long time what had caused the nun to be so nasty until he found out about one of television's first lesbian kisses on the soap Brookside. She was obviously kissing another nun, that's what I think, he said. He told how he was later moved to another institution in England. During his time there, he experienced sexual abuse at the hands of a trainee priest, the inquiry heard. He told how the enforced move really affected him, having robbed him of his Scottish identity. Another witness told the inquiry he has a fear of nuns after suffering physical, emotional, and mental torture at Smilham. The man, whose name cannot be disclosed, spoke of regular, regular thunderous beatings at the hands of the nuns tasked with looking after him. Burn in hell to these nuns. The witness told how he was taken to Smilham uh, for a time at the age of four following the death of his mother. He said the nuns would beat him, kick him, and strike him with implements such as wooden coat hangers. The punishments were frequent and the beatings were thunderous, he said. He also spoke of verbal abuse from the callous sisters, telling the hearing the nuns would say things like, Your ma's left you for good. He said, Being there at Smilham, it was physical, emotional, and mental torture. The witness told the inquiry he has an absolute fear of nuns. The inquiry, chaired by Lady Smith, continues. Um, just absolutely disgusting. You know, and again, all these people like Stephen Anderson and things like that that cover up, oh, the Catholic Church is bad, yeah, sure, but Mystery Babylon is America. That is satanic. Okay, that is disgusting. Revelation chapter 17 verse 6 says, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. You know, this woman 
she isn't just satisfied with a little bit of blood, with a little bit of horror and torture and things like that. She's drunken with it. She wants more and more and more abusing, abusing children, uh, just murdering people and stuff like that. And the worst part is it's going to get, you know, the, the very worst killing is going to be in the future. That's why I stand against Catholicism. People get all upset at me. Oh, you think the Catholics are behind everything? In the, the Well, you know, it indirectly it will tie back usually to the Vatican. You know, she's the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Revelation 17 says that. So I'm a Bible believer. The Bible says Mystery Babylon is there. And she's the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So if there's something that's an abomination in the earth, it ties back to Mystery Babylon according to the Bible. So if you have an issue with what I say, you have really have an issue with the Bible. You know? But uh, just wanted to bring this out. Just, just keep you know, hammering away at this stuff because it's just so disgusting, you know. But uh, I pray for the wrath of God to fall upon the Roman Catholic Church. I'm looking forward to it. That's why when, uh, I mean, one more verse of Scripture here. Actually, I'll just, I'll show it to you. One of my favorites. Go to the book of Revelation, chapter 19. Um, the fall of Babylon is in Revelation 18. And it says, After these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. Praise the Lord, I can't wait for that day. And all these poor little children that were abused and everything else, and just had their mind destroyed by these wicked, disgusting Roman Catholic priests and nuns. Justice is finally going to be done for that. I can't wait for that day. And if you dare to try and take away the blame from the Roman Catholic Church. I mean, you know, the saints are cheering it. Uh, hello, the Roman Catholic system goes way back to the first century. The Roman Empire eventually merging about the fourth century into the Roman Catholic Church. Where's America at? Oh, well, America's Babylon, you know. And they said, well, it, it it moved. You know, it was originally the Roman Catholic Church in the first century, or the Roman Empire, and then it was the Roman Catholic Church, and now it's America. You're a fool if you believe that. Okay? I mean, truly believe that. If you're, you know, saying it, it's because you're deceiving people. Just sickens me. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.